Welcome to today's episode. I'm your host, Dr. Padma Ramurthy, and today we are delving into the fascinating realm of metabolism and its intricate relationship with our health. Specifically, we'll be exploring how our bodies normally process carbohydrates and what happens when this system goes angry, leading to insulin resistance, prediabetes, and ultimately diabetes. Let's begin by understanding the fundamental process of carbohydrate metabolism. When we consume carbohydrates like rice or wheat, our bodies break them down into glucose, a simple sugar that enters the bloodstream. This rise in blood sugar signals the pancreas to release insulin, a crucial hormone that acts like a key, unlocking the doors of our cells and allowing glucose to enter the cells for energy production. Muscles are the primary consumers of glucose, using up to 70% of what's circulating in our blood. Any excess glucose that isn't immediately needed is stored away in the liver for later use. In a healthy system, this balanced dance keeps blood sugar levels stable. As glucose enters cells, blood sugar drops, insulin levels decrease as well. Now what happens when this system gets out of whack? Literally leading to the downward spiral of insulin resistance. So this finely tuned system can malfunction when we consistently consume more carbohydrates than our bodies can use, especially combined with physical inactivity, problems arise. Excess blood sugar prompts the pancreas to work overtime, churning out more insulin in an attempt to keep the blood sugar levels in check. Over time, this chronic stress can lead to a condition called insulin resistance. Muscle cells overloaded with glucose become like locked rooms. They lose their sensitivity to insulin and struggle to take up the glucose. This happens because there's a lot of fat which is getting accumulated inside the muscle cells because of the excess glucose which has been converted to fat and causes the accumulation of fat inside the muscles and this leads to the muscle developing insulin resistance. So all this means that there's more glucose remaining in the bloodstream, further burdening the pancreas to produce more insulin. The consequences of insulin resistance extends even beyond the muscle cells. The excess glucose now floods the liver, triggering the production of new fat within the liver, causing the fatty liver. This fat can accumulate in the liver itself or throughout the body also. Additionally, the inflamed fat tissue in our body releases more fatty acids into the bloodstream, further worsening the insulin resistance in the muscle and liver, and even impairing the pancreas' ability to produce insulin. Left unchecked, this domino effect can lead to prediabetes, a condition where blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but not high enough for diabetes to be diagnosed or for a diabetes diagnosis. If left unaddressed, pre-diabetes can eventually progress to type 2 diabetes. Now, what are the culprits behind insulin resistance? What exactly throws a wrench into this delicate metabolic machinery? Here are some main culprits. Excess body fat, especially the visceral fat. Carrying too much weight, particularly around the belly area, around the waist area, which is called the visceral fat is a major risk factor for insulin resistance. A waist measurement of 40 inches or more for men and 35 inches or more for women is linked to insulin resistance. Next is physical inactivity. Regular physical activity improves, improves insulin sensitivity and helps build muscle. Muscle is a glucose guzzler. The more muscle you have, the more effective it is in absorbing the blood sugar. Uh, absorbing the sugar or glucose from the blood. A diet high in processed carbohydrates, sugary drinks and saturated fats can all wreak havoc on blood sugar levels and promote insulin resistance. Certain medical conditions like hypothyroidism, 
Hyperthyroidism happens when your thyroid is underactive and doesn't produce enough thyroid hormone. Your thyroid plays a large role in regulating your metabolism, how your body transforms the food you eat into energy. When it makes too little, when the body makes too little thyroid hormone, it slows down your metabolism, including your glucose metabolism, which can lead to insulin resistance. Symptoms of insulin resistance, while insulin resistance itself may not have noticeable symptoms, some conditions associated with it can be red flags, including high blood pressure, high cholesterol, increased waist circumference, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome symptoms in women, acanthosis nigricans, which is a skin condition where there's black pigmentation on your neck, on the shoulder, on the upper back, etc. So how do we prevent or reverse insulin resistance? The good news is that insulin resistance and pre-diabetes are often reversible with a multi-pronged approach. First is your regular physical activity. Exercise improves insulin sensitivity and helps manage weight. The muscles become more sensitive to insulin and thus help in extracting that glucose from the blood. Healthy diet. Focus on low glycemic index foods like beans and legumes, fruits such as apples and berries, non-starchy vegetables such as asparagus, cauliflower, leafy greens, nuts, dairy, fish and meat. All this releases the low glycemic uh, foods release glucose slowly and steadily, especially when it's taken along with a plenty of fiber. And weight management, losing even a modest amount of weight can significantly improve in insulin sensitivity. And other addressing the medical conditions like hypothyroidism, proper management is crucial. Understanding the intricate interplay between metabolism, diet, physical activity and insulin resistance empowers us to take control of our health. By embracing a proactive approach and making informed lifestyle choices, we can pave the way for optimal metabolic health and overall well-being. Join us next time as we continue to unravel the mysteries of metabolism. We'll delve deeper into strategies for promoting metabolic resilience and vitality. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Until next time, stay healthy and stay informed.